Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's the start of yet another week. That means round nine of Super Rugby has completed and we can have a look back at the eight matches in the last round. Take a look at how our picks went. Uh, a little early hinter. They went horribly badly. A lot of upsets, a lot of strange and odd results. But let's get stuck into them and see what exactly happened over round nine. Now, of course, two teams had the bye. They were the Blues and the Bulls. So no action from those two teams this week. The weekend instead kicked off in Dunedin with the Highlanders up against the Sharks. And the Sharks were coming off a loss last week as well. The Highlanders, two weeks ago when they last played, were down to the Reds. And speaking of Reds, the game was summed up in one moment, just 12 minutes into the match. And that was Jason Emery picking up a big, massive red card for his tackle on Vili LaRue. Now, first things first, I think it was very much an appropriate call. Deserved the yellow card as well. You cannot argue with that. The way he took the man out in the air. Complete disregard for the way he fell. It, it looked like as if he had no idea where the ball had gone. He just ran straight line and then poof, uh, man falling on his head. Vili LaRue went down and absolute thunderous on his neck. Uh, Jason Emery a massively, massively bad tackle, and he was gone 12 minutes into the game. Red card Highlanders. Now, what we did see was no change of game plan from the Sharks whatsoever. We know they don't really have a way of attacking with any great instinct whatsoever, and they continued that in this matchup as well. No tries from them throughout the whole 80 minutes, despite... Spending 74 or 78 of them, I should say, with a man advantage. They still couldn't pass the try line, which was just remarkable. And they relied just on the boots to get them all the way home. The Sharks, though, they weren't without any uh, indiscretions of their own. Pick up two yellow cards as well, but they put all their points on defense. They relied on their defense and getting and securing penalties up the other end of the field and putting away the three-pointers when they got given half a chance, which is all they wanted to do, all they needed to do. And in the end, a desperate Highlanders desperately trying to score tries to get the ball to do the unthinkable wasn't quite enough. And the Sharks come away with a win without scoring a try. I might just add again. 15-14 over the Highlanders. What's a start to the weekend? I remember I was at a work function at the time of watching this match and I was in disbelief and how close the Highlanders came to winning this match despite spending 90% of it a man down. They still almost won it and really should have Lima Sopawanga missing a drop goal attempt that would have put them in the lead with just minutes remaining as well. A remarkable matchup, but the, the Sharks... They trusted what they know, and that is defense. And that got them over the line. My score prediction was 37-20 to the Highlanders. I was miles away. The final score, 15-14 to the Sharks. Zero points in my opening match of the weekend. So after one match went very much against the flow of how I expected things to go, we made our way over to Australia, where the Rebels were up against the Cheetahs. Now, this is a match I thought the Cheetahs should have no real trouble. And it's interesting, looking back at the picks for this match, that most people were pretty pretty close, but just the wrong way around. And that's how this match really went uh, for the second game of the weekend. It was a game of two very, very different halves. But by the end of the game, there was one team on top of the Australian Conference. And that was the Rebels, amazingly. They were down 14 points to 10 at half time. Yet, what they had built over the first 40, 50 minutes really started to tell as we made our way through the second half as the Cheetahs seemed to just finally crush out of the pressure and crack in the set piece and, and everything that had held solid for the majority of the match all fell away. It all fell apart and the Rebels, they come storming into the game late on to eventually score five tries to two and take away a bonus point win at the end of the match, the second of the weekend. And in my opinion, the second upset of the weekend, I expected the Cheetahs to do that one 
relatively easily. What has turned out, the Rebels 34, Cheetahs 14. The Cheetahs have been down and the Rebels have done it themselves rather comfortably. Once again, another upset results. Another zero points for my total. And if the first two matches of the weekend were anything to go by, we're going to be in for a treat for our matchup number three, which was the Sunwolves at home in Tokyo up against the Jaguars. Now this one, I expected the Jaguars to probably take them out quite comfortably, but the Sunwolves, I wouldn't call them unpredictable, but have the ability to score some fantastic tries when they need to. And really, when you're a team that's just been smashed by 92 points or conceded 92 points, you need something to bounce back. And the Sunwolves, really, they had to find it. And they had to find it relatively quickly as well. Both these sides, a lot of travel. The Jaguars just come to New Zealand. The Sunwolves has been over in South Africa as well. But it was an explosive and high tempo, amazing matchup between these two newcomers of Super Rugby. Seven tries, top seed turvy all over the show between these two teams. Neither side giving an inch on attack. I think the kicking was the end of the day, the decisive factor. Hernandez missing a number of kicks, but it was the success of PC that really set these two teams apart. There was just a point in it nearly till the very end with an extra time. It was the Sunwolves scoring that extra try that put them over that bonus point threshold, you could call it, that denied the Jaguars anything at all from this match. The final score... 36-28, the Sunwolves with the win over the Jaguars. Now I can't believe it again, another upset. Now I think everyone expected the Jaguars to win, but everyone wanted the Sunwolves to get off the mark. And really, at the end of the day, I don't think there's a real loser here. The Jaguars team themselves, although that loss will really, really hurt, I think another loss to the Sunwolves and potentially a season without a win would have been massively damaging to the Japanese franchise. So I'm pleased to see them get the win. But at the cost of a team I quite fancy, the Jaguars, it's a bit of a disappointment. My prediction for that was the Jaguars to win 29-23. So once again, I come away from that third match of the weekend. Zero points, three in a row. Off to a horrible start with the picks this weekend, I have to say. So I was desperate to get my picks back on track and I'm relying now on the Chiefs to get a big win over the Hurricanes who are at home to do exactly that. But what we did see was another extremely close and tense and tight matchup between these two amazing teams. I mean, the Hurricanes have been average throughout parts of the season. Round one, for example, the Chiefs have been phenomenal for a lot of the competition as well. But... They've fallen down back to the level that everyone else is at as well. And this had the potential to be a massive match. I think the goal kicking worries really highlighted uh, in this match for the Hurricanes. The kicking of Bowden Barrett was abysmal to say the least. And probably would have changed the result had he had his kicking boots on. In the end it was Jason Woodward who took over the kicking tee. That's how bad it got for Barrett. McKenzie on the other hand missed none. Not one miss at all for young Damien McKenzie. It was a frantic attacking match as we expected, but it did also come with a bizarre end that almost took the game on its head. Chiefs with the lead, injury to a front rower, and resulting in the Chiefs saying, we want uncontested scrums, we don't have a suitable replacement in the front row. I think it was the tight head prop who got injured, they only had a loose head, to come on to replace all the other way around. Can't remember exactly 100% what way around that was, but it resulted in uncontested scrums. Now, a rule is that the team who does put forward the idea of uncontested scrums has to lose the player because it's their fault that the scrum battle cannot be commenced. Now, I've seen a lot of teams submit uncontested scrums. Internationally, uh, super rugby, domestically, all those kinds of things. But never before ever have I seen this rule actually enforced. And with a few minutes to go on the clock, the Chiefs are hit by one. The Hurricanes now a man up for the last five minutes or so. It really turned this match right around. Unbelievably, 
Bowden Barrett did make a bust, feeding the ball wide open. Try line for Woodward, who spilt his breakfast all over the floor. Is that karma back on the Hurricanes after they were almost gifted the victory? Tenacious defence by the Chiefs. You cannot compensate for being a man down. But in the end, the Hurricanes could not get it done. It was a strange end to the match, but a bizarre. A lot of people scratching their heads. There's a lot of rule books being thrown around saying, splat, this is how it works. But really, in the end, it's just one of these rules that really needs to be looked at and considered uh, for future references, for future times that this will happen. It seems a bit old. It seems fair enough that this happens, but it just seems like the sort of thing that most people go, uh, we, we just won't play that rule because really that doesn't play into the game these days. It's not really relevant to how rugby works. But, you know, fair play to whoever called, made that call, the guy on the sideline, whatever he is, the, the match official, whatever he wants to call himself. That's the rules, that's how it plays. And fair call to the Chiefs as well for gutsing that out and pulling the win. 28-27 over the Hurricanes. Now, my pick was Chiefs 44, Hurricanes 30. So I get the winner finally and pick up one point from that matchup. We make our way to Australia where the Western Force are up against the Waratahs. And if ever there was a chance here for the Force to get a win over the Waratahs, this was it. And for really 80% of this match, the Force had a chance. They were within a score or two of really, really right being in this matchup. The Waratahs, I thought they were flat for the majority of this game, but something clicked. Something woke them up, and they just exploded into the final quarter of the match of even less from about halfway second half. The game just changed, and they did blitz the force and blew them away completely off the field. It was an outstanding finish by the Waratahs. Showed exactly what we all know they're capable of, but what we just never see them offer up in Super Rugby. Can we see that from them in the future? That'll be what they will want to answer. And that is what we all really want to know as well. They were still very unconvincing, especially against the Force, a team that they should be dealing to uh, like they did in that last quarter for the whole 80 minutes. The Force, to their credit, they've looked pretty good this year. Very much improved. I think if they keep this core, keep this base and build further, they could be a team that can beat the Waratahs week in, week out, regardless of either side having really good or really bad form. It was an entertaining match, I thought, for a good 60 minutes. But the Waratahs showed their class finally. It's taken them a long time to come out with a big win. 49-13 over the Western Force. Now, my pick was 22-9, the Waratahs, to get the win. So I still grab one point for getting the head-to-head -head winner correct. Now we go over to South Africa, and it's the Stormers who are in action next up against the Reds. And... This one was more unconvincing play by a competition frontrunner. And that's what I mean by the Stormers. A team that really has put their hand up as one of the best sides in Super Rugby. Had a horrible first half. Mistake after mistake. Butchering and throwing away. Try after try after try. They could have and should have been leading by a whole heap at the halftime break. But it was the Reds who somehow, after halftime, managed to turn every piece of attack by the Stormers into counter-attack by the Reds absolutely stunned the Stormers defense hit them hard hit them fast and they scored two spectacular tries within a few minutes they really put this game on notice and put the Stormers well and truly on notice as the Reds stole the match away and eventually did take the lead about midpoint halfway second half again they really opened this game right up and it really opened up the Stormers' eyes as they went really into their shell and they put themselves to work in the basics that they know. Winning possession, winning territory, getting down the other end of the field and taking points. They took the lead back and they closed that game out like the champion side we know they can be. The Stormers were good, but they weren't very good. The Reds, ever improving. We know we've seen them get better and better and better and they just continue on that trend Yet another week. The Stormers have to show much more of that last little block where they shut the Reds out. They need to bring that back to their full 80 minutes. The final score was 40 points to 22. Seems a blowout, but it was much more closer uh, near the end of the match before the Stormers put the shutout on the Reds.
My prediction was 30 points to 15. So again, get the right winner and pick up one point for that result. Staying in South Africa now, and we're off to see the Kings up against the Lions. And this is a game I thought could get pretty ugly. Could get really ugly if the Lions absolutely clicked the way that they can. This was actually the first time these two teams have met in a super rugby matchup. I know the, the um, promotion and relegation thing with the Cats and the Kings and from previous years. But now they're finally both here together. And they're both meeting for the first time. And as we all expected, it was largely dominated by the Lions. Brief moments, the Kings had a little say in what they could do. They snuck in a try or two throughout it as well. But really, in control from the start to the finish were the Lions. What didn't help the Kings was the nightmare that their fly half and up to now has been a reliable path for share of their backline had a nightmare, absolute disaster, and someone that they really banked their gameplay on for his kicking and his point accumulation for sheer was absolutely not there at all in this matchup, and it really killed what extra that the Kings may be able to put together. Ultimately, the Lions, though, really had in the bag right from the kickoff, and they didn't let up throughout. They put on some good play and took a big win as well right at the end. 45 points to 10 over the Kings. My prediction was a 53-16, so it wasn't too far off this with that one, but it's hard to know just how big some of these sides are going to go. I still pick up one point for getting the winner correct. It's a bit hard not to, but the way this weekend's been going, just one match remains now, and we are off to see the Brumbies. This one, Sunday night, once again, up against the Crusaders. I'm quite liking the Sunday night rugby, especially... With a Monday holiday here as well in New Zealand and Australia for Anzac Day. Uh, it was nice to sit out on a Sunday night and watch some good quality uh, Super Rugby matches. Although the Brumbies fans will probably think anything but this match was mostly cruise control for the Crusaders. The Brumbies, I think they were really average. And it's kind of what we've seen from the Waratahs as well. And you have to say the Rebels deserve to be at the top of the Australian conference the rebels hardly really threatened uh the crusaders line let alone the match going their way and the crusaders from the start to the finish were really in control much like we've seen from the lions as well the brumbies did nip in here and there but really the crusaders were the only team in this matchup six tries to two call it what you like that's a bit of a hammering bonus point in the bank they were crushed the brumbies simple and short, as much as you want to beat around the bush about it, they were destroyed. The Crusaders showing, really. Now, finally, after their dodgy start, like they always have, they have arrived. And, well, my preseason prediction about the Crusaders taking out the top spot, I have to say, looks pretty good right about now. We've got so many teams in New Zealand who look the goods this season. Still in Australia, though, the Rebels, after this match, because of this result, still remain number one in Australia. Can you believe it? The Rebels leading after nine rounds of Super Rugby. Final score there, 40 points to 14. Crusaders over the Brumbies. My score prediction on this one was 27-25. Crusaders to take it. It was a hard one to pick, but when you see the final results, boy, it shouldn't be really the Crusaders dominant from start to finish. And for that, I still grab one point for picking the result, or the winner, I should say, correct between those two teams. Right, that wraps us up here for our eight matches of round number nine. It's been, wow, a very, very entertaining weekend. A lot of upsets, a lot of matches going where we did not expect them to go. But all in all, a decent week for points. I pick up five points, all for head-to-head -head results as well. So I pick five matches with the right winner. I get no bonus points whatsoever for my score predictions, which is a bit of a disappointment. But the way it started off, getting nothing from the first three or so matches, uh, I think it could have gone a lot, lot worse. For the best of the best that picked in their own selections was TGI321, once again, who also picked up five points. So another draw between me and TGI. Good selections, good picks. He did pick up a bonus point for one of the matches, which helped boost a, a prediction list that did feature a draw picked between the Force and the Waratahs. Game, ballsy stuff, but didn't come out.
for this week. So five points for him, five points for myself. You can see my leaderboard on screen now to see how many points I've accumulated and how my picks are going. But that does wrap me up for round nine of Super Rugby. Thank you all for tuning in watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time for the preview of round 10 of Super Rugby. Things getting exciting now. The team's really starting to settle down into who are the best of the best and who are also Rans for 2016. Leave your comments below what you thought about the weekend's action. Of course, don't forget to get your picks in in the preview videos you're coming up in a couple of days. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you all next time. Until then, take care.